And welcome into the Full Time Roundup Prediction Show. My name is Matt Gesslin. I am co-hosted, as always, alongside with Daniel Brackett. Daniel, we are back. Fixtures are back. It was a fun break during the international break. Our last episode, which you guys can go check out on anywhere you get your podcasts, um, was a little different. We talked more some generic stuff. We talked about some things that we like talking about when it comes to football. But, Daniel, we are officially back and the games are back, and this is what we love doing, is getting you guys ready for these games ahead of time. Daniel will give you his best bets as well. Uh, but, again, Daniel, it's it's we're, let's just roll right into it because it's already here. It's it's almost – I'm excited. I don't know if you can hear my voice. I'm giddy. Games are back, and, and there's some good ones that we're going to cover and get you ready for. You say giddy makes me laugh. But uh, for all that are listening, happy Thanksgiving. Hope everyone enjoyed it and got to spend time with loved ones. So I, I just wanted to, to quickly – say that um before we move on but hope you're doing well matt let's uh, let's get started now i'll let you intro and see what game you want to pick first there you picked some good ones uh so just so everyone knows how thursday works and of course i echo daniel's sentiment about thanksgiving hope that you are stuffed and happy and full and sitting on the couch with a belly full of turkey and beer in your hand watching some of these games over the weekend that are coming up uh but daniel's picked some good ones as he always does and of course, we have to start with an early kick for Liverpool because I've already heard about it all week about how this is an early kick again for Liverpool. Daniel, this is not only an early kick, but this is also maybe the biggest game of the weekend, maybe one of the most important games of the season for both of these two teams in terms of the Premier League and the title race. What say you heading into one of your biggest weekends of the year? Premier League is a bunch of fucking morons from putting this at 7.30 uh, U.S. time. Um, obviously, that's, that's quicker or earlier, excuse me, in Europe. But why why not put up the, the prime time last game on Saturday? Why are you making this the early one? Especially when you know that there's uh, South American players having to travel all the way across the world to get there. Um, so just awful, awful scheduling. I mean... For example, we see in the NFL teams get flexed, you know, so you because people want to see the best games at standalone. So you don't know that this is going to be an early game, um, but you know what? I'll, I'll quit bitching and just pray to God that that this game goes well. Um, we're going to play a heavy underdogs in this one, which I, I kind of found a little surprising based off the recent injury news of Erling Holland, um, you know, Mateus Nunez. Mateo Kovacic, um, they'll just name a few, Ake as well. So City are banged up. Liverpool are kind of getting back to health. I think Raven Barrett is, is good to go, and so is Curtis Jones. Both have key players traveling, though, so we'll really see if, you know, the likes of Alvarez, Ederson, Allison, Luis Diaz, Darwin Nunez are going to be playing the full 90 here. Um, but it's going to be a very interesting game. City at home. I'm going to say there's going to be a lot of goals on this one. I don't think this is going to be a cagey affair by any means. And I'm going to say... Uh, 3-3 three, three draw. That's a pretty high-scoring game. City would be giving up seven goals in their last two games if that's the case, which would be, to me, pretty pretty extensive uh, defensive lapses, uh, to put it lightly. I think Pep Guardia would probably replace his entire back line in January if that happened and, and ask for <laughs> $500 million. Uh, I will say 2-1 City. I hear you on all the things you talked about. And, of course, the, at the time of this recording, we don't know the, the health and status of Erling Holland and of course, he didn't play in the second Norway game. Was that more of a precaution for for an ankle injury that he was dealing with, or or is he is he genuinely hurt? Um, so that will determine if he if he can go if he's fully fit. This is an injury he's been dealing with in the Premier League as well. So it's not just a, a one off thing that happened for that first game for Norway. It, it it's been a recurring problem for him. I'll take two one City, and to just to put a finer point on your comment of of how do we play these games, the flex schedule. You know what would happen if we did flex this and put this on Sunday afternoon is that both of these managers would then complain that there wasn't enough time for their midweek game on Wednesday and Thursday, and then the cycle would continue. So there's really no place to put this game. There's no place to put this game, Daniel. Just play the game and shut up Jurgen Klopp and get it on and play. 
whatever, whatever. But I, I did like what you had to say there. Um, I think this is, I mean, my own, my dumb brain thinking is, oh, well, C gave up four to Chelsea, and Chelsea stinks. So that's right. I think one of the could put up seven. No, I'm just kidding. That, that would never happen. But I just saw they were very, you know, very open at the back, and that is not the Pep Guardiola way. I also appreciate you picking City here, and I think the Matt Gesslin curse will be in full effect. So, Didn't even think about that. I did not even think about that. So you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're and, welcome. And you, still, you can't take it back, and we'll go ahead and move on before you do. Um, to pivot to another Premier League game here, Newcastle versus Chelsea. Um, I'll let's see vibe check on this one. I think this is a big game for Chelsea. Uh, I mentioned Chelsea have have a new standard coming out of that game against City. Um, this will it'll really kind of be proven here if that was a one off or um, if if this team's for real or starting to become for real. Of course, they do play up to their competition, and Newcastle being above them in the table uh, puts things in perspective for Chelsea this week too. Give me a win. I'm taking Chelsea. I'm starting to feel good, Daniel. We're putting the ball in the net. There's potential that Christopher and Kunku is going to play in this match or at least be close, maybe come off the bench and get some minutes just to start getting into the feel of the thing of the game. But he's starting to come back and get close to, to full fitness. I'm going to take Chelsea three to one. Uh, it's a big score, but I'll, wow. I'll take I'll take Chelsea three to one. I think the 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 goals are starting to come from what we should have scored earlier. We're getting a little bit of retribution for not getting some of those goals early in the season. Is this at the bridge? I believe it's at St. James's Park, but I might be okay. wrong. But either That's way, I'm still taking the score. Funny, right? I'm still taking that oh. score line. All right, interesting. You guys are our beast at home. So that's the one concerning thought when it comes to your prediction here. Um, but Newcastle are also very banged up at the moment. So they are. And it is on St. James's Park, though, which makes it a little harder, but I still stand by my prediction. I will agree with you slightly saying that Chelsea will win this game 2-1. Um, it'll probably be a late goal, um, but I do think they'll get it done just because how you know, banged up Newcastle is currently. Um, Miguel Moron, Alexander Isak, might be hopeful. Um, Trippier apparently has a knock, so we'll see. We'll see, but I, I do like uh, Chelsea winning this game. Um, I can't. I can't complain about that. Although maybe the way you've been picking them, I don't know. Maybe it's the, maybe you're the fade now. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have I'm to the see. Fade. That's that's crazy. Now to to kind of go to to Germany, we have Borussia Dortmund versus Gladbach. Probably the best matchup um, of the Bundesliga this week. But I mean, all Bundesliga games are are actually really fun. So I did want to give them a shout out because they're probably the most enjoyable. Uh, league to watch at the moment, but BBD, Gladbach, Dortmund, such a weird team, Gladbach, also a pretty weird team. Where do you kind of lean on this one? Man, we talked about how what Dortmund's going to show up and that's going to determine, but you don't, you never know. Um, I'll take a draw here. I, I do think this is a big matchup for Dortmund just to kind of get into the, the swing and kind of get some momentum coming out that now that there's no more international breaks to kind of chop the season up for a little bit until after the holiday fixtures, I think Dortmund need to go on a little bit of a run here to keep in touch. Although I've already said pretty, pretty openly, that I think their title chances are gone, but um, just to kind of stay within touch, I think they need to get three points, but I do think I can't confidently say that they're going to get it. Cause I just don't know who they are. Give me one, one. Um, uh, it's just, I, I can't see them. Losing this match, but I just don't know what team's showing up. Yeah, they're a new team to kind of put your finger on. But after the international break, resting up, um, you know, probably been studying uh, Gladbach's ways for, for the last week or so. I'm going to pick Dortmund here. Um, Gladbach are, are not a good team. They're just not. Um, so Dortmund should, should win. But they also love to struggle against bad opponents. But I'm still picking Dortmund. I'm going to say this is going to be goals galore, probably 3 1. I don't disagree with that. It could be either way. I think, either way, I think that Dortmund does enough to get a point, but doesn't take it home, uh, which will be pretty much epitomize their entire season. But um, Daniel, a team that has been winning games that we didn't think they would win. 
is Girona, who sit atop the table in La Liga. Of course, let me rephrase that. They sit atop the table in La Liga. They after the time, just, just the, let it sink in, really. It just let it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just let it sink in. And, and of course, they play on Monday uh, this week, so they will have Athletic Club in Girona. So, again, um, a big moment for them to continue, of course, with Real Madrid's injury problems. Could be an opportunity for them to maybe get a little bit more of an extension from Real Madrid and secure that place when, when inevitably Barca and Real Madrid come charging at them at some point. But what's your take on this game? Do they get the job done at home, or is this a potential starting of the, the downfall? We haven't seen Girona play many really good teams. Um, and when they did play a good team, they, they lost in horrific fashion to Real Madrid. I do think that there's going to be a lot of goals here. I thought the club did not convince me against Celta Vigo a couple weekends ago. Um, I'm going to say three, three. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of goals. A lot of goals. A very bold prediction, but these teams love to concede and they love to score. So Daniel I'm does love his goals, goals, goals. goals. I Daniel loves his do. goals, goals, goals. So three, three. All right, I'll go two, one, Girona. I think they get the job done. I do agree with you. Athletic against Celta Vigo. Although Celta Vigo have gotten a little bit the short end of the stick and played pretty well for a lot of their games, but they didn't really, you know, didn't really stand out too much. And I think Girona have enough uh, in this one. Two, one, Girona at home for me. Uh, but there is moving a pretty big matchup that we have yet to talk about here, Daniel. It's the two teams atop the Serie A. Of course, Inter sit atop Juve, and they come out of the gate. They will be the late game on Sunday in Serie A. It's at the Allianz Stadium. So Juventus get, you know, get the home field in this one. Does Inter go in, though, and continue the streak? of They're 10-1-1 right now. They're on top of the table by two points. Do they do they kind of assert themselves and then extend their lead, or how do, how do you see this one playing out? This will probably be during my nap time. Uh, I think this is going to be a very boring game. So not goals, goals, goals. Um, but I, I do think Inter edges out Juve. I think Juve has gotten kind of lucky. Um, they they really just score off set pieces and last second goals. Honestly, that's been their bread and butter. Um, I'm going to say Inter go top and not I wouldn't say win the league here, but kind of you know make it so far where it's going to be almost impossible to catch up. So I'm going to say Inter one nil. Win would put them five points clear. I agree with you. I don't think the, by any stretch of the imagination this season is done in Syria, uh, but it would be a, a nice little cushion for Inter who've looked really good and their players internationally have, have also stepped up um, and, and delivered for them as well there in those games. I think 2-0 Inter in this one, I think it's pretty easy um, for them and they and they cruise. Juve are playing well and um, Federico Chiesa played fantastic for Italy the other day and, and is starting to kind of come back to form after his knee injury that, that sidelined him. Um, but I think too much from Inter, 2-0 Inter in that one. Sticking in in Italy, though, there's a couple other great matchups, especially in that top four battle uh, or top three battle, depending on how you want to look at it. Of course, the big one, Daniel, for me, is Atalanta versus Napoli. I had Atalanta finishing fourth in the league, and they're right on the ed outside of that, sitting in fifth, um, fighting Fiorentina you know, back and forth with those two. So I'm going to go with a 2-0 draw, 2-0 draw, 2-0 win for Napoli here. I think Napoli find a way to get something on the board and they've been they've been playing a little bit better of late um and out of the break i think it's a little too much for atalanta but um it's a, it's a hard one for me because of course like i said i thought thought atalanta were going to fight for that fourth position but i think they, they do trip up on this one interesting take um there's a lot of unknown with napoli right you, you just lost to the worst team in Serie A. your, your coach got fired um, you bring in a, a coach who hasn't been that successful anywhere, honestly, to, to, to kind of just put it out there. But new manager balance is a very big thing in this. And it's a factor here. Um, I'm going to go with a 2-2 a draw. Atalanta has played good teams tough. They, you know, they've slightly just lost to Milan a couple of weeks ago. 
that's just sitting in the back of my head here. And I think that they should be able to get a result. Big, big result. Of course, if they do get it, um, both teams, like I said, battling for that fourth spot, uh, Napoli one point ahead of Atalanta who sit in fifth battling the, tied with Fiorentina who also play a, a big matchup here this weekend against AC Milan, Daniel. Um, again, these top, this is the top six going at it head to head this weekend in Syria. If you want to watch the, the, you know, the top of the league, go at it and see what shakes out. These are your three games right here. All six of the top six are playing against each other. And this is really when the table is going to start to shake out. Um, AC Milan, we've talked about their struggles and, and, and they can't win the big game. This is a big game. Um, in, in domestically in their league, this is a big game. Daniel Fiorentina are a tough team to play, and they they show that week in week out, both in Europe as well as in you know Syria. Ah, so um, does AC Milan get it done? Especially, I know some players are still hurt, um, but does AC Milan pull out a big win when they need one? Yeah, see, it's getting hot here. Um, so Milan need to win. But with just the injury injury news, hasn't we're, we're still recording this early, so we haven't really we don't have a good update on who's going to play and who's not going to play. But Fiorentina have been extremely impressive this season, um, and I think this game is going to be a draw. Um, I do think there will be goals, um, which I, I've said quite a few times today. So sorry if I'm a broken record here, but we like goals, than, so there's nothing to complain yeah. about. That, that's true. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to go 2-2. Two, two. I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. This is my nap game. Um, <laughs> your your Juve Inter one is yours. I think that's going to be a good match. Um, of course, there's some outstanding, just to go back to that one quickly, some players, Weston McKinney, who got hurt in the first leg against Trinidad Tobago and, and left camp. Is he going to be available? Um, but this game, to me, is is the napper, the Milan versus Fiorentina game. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll take one one nil or one one uh, one one draw here, and, and that'll set up a, a big matchup depending on what happens in the rest of those two top six matchups um, to to kind of see where the net where the league nets out. Will AC Milan even still be in the top four? Who knows? Potentially with with points, could they be caught? Um, you know, that there's a lot going on right now. All three, all four of those teams from three to six are within three points of each other. So it's a great battle at the moment to keep an eye out for. One team and one battle that's starting to kind of take shape, Daniel, that we knew and expected. PSG has gone atop the table in Liga, uh, but they do a big matchup here against Monaco, who sit third, only three points back. A win here, these two teams are tied at the top. Does does Monaco sneak in and grab three points against a you know PSG team who has a hot Kylian Mbappe who just got a hat trick and a boatload of points against Patrick Walter, um, but without, uh, you know, Warren Zaire Emery, who, who unfortunately gets hurt uh, in the window. Yeah, Zaire Emery is going to be a big miss, but I do think PSG you know, have, have, the, have the depth to, to be just fine in this matchup. I think they, they comfortably beat Monaco here. Um, I'm going to stay 4-1, which is tough because I, I would love a, a French challenger um, in Monaco's, you know, right there to, to do it and they keep dropping points everywhere so can't really back them at this time and i'm definitely going to say dsg comfortably win yeah i would agree um of course it's playing you know at park the press and the place is going to be electric as always especially with you know top three team uh and so yeah i'll take three no psg not much to, to really argue here and um you can start to Start to wave goodbye to the rest of the teams if you're PSG, in my opinion, after the next couple of weeks. But, uh, Daniel, there, there are not too many games, so that covered all the games that we wanted to highlight as far as a preview and, and predictions. But, folks, I know that you've all been waiting for this. It's been two weeks since you've had any of these come out and hit your wire. Daniel is back with his best bets. Of course, we, we didn't want to necessarily give you international games because – there's just too many. We didn't really know enough about it. We didn't have the time. There's just too much going on in the world right now is what we're trying to get at. And we wanted to focus in on these on these matchups for you. We also needed a break, to be honest, after Champions League and Europa League and everything else in between, every league, cup, domestic cup, European cup, all the cups. So without further ado, I give you the man of the hour, Daniel Brackett, who's going to give you his preview bets for this week's matchups. Thank you, Matt. It's good to be back here. Um, 
I did miss soccer and, and winning money on it um, the last couple weeks because I, I genuinely do not take anything in the international window because there's just so many unknowns and those games do get a little weird. Um, so I, I do have a bonus pick because I, I miss the domestic league so much and I love some of these matchups here. So we're going to go first with the parlay. We'll risk one unit per usual. Um, Liverpool plus a half point. Basically, this means that if they draw or better, this is this leg's good, right? So Liverpool a half plus a half point. Leverkusen money line versus better Bremen. Always back to the ball, always until they give us a reason not to. Um, Atletico Madrid money line and Bayern money line. Um, these odds are roughly around four to one. You could probably get a little better odds, more or less. But depending on some change. Um, so I, I really like that parlay. I wanted to make it somewhat juicy for you. Um, so that is my parlay of the week. Now, I have five, I have five uh, straight bets. We're going to rest you know, to win two units on each. Um, one of these will not be tweeted out. This will be a bonus bet on the pod. So first off, Going to the Parc de France, over three and a half in the PSG Monaco game. PSG might put up this number alone, um, but because Monaco are very leaky at the back, but they do score a goal. And I think the player Emery will be missed in, in that he kind of shields PSG's back line. He's a little fraudulent. So I do love over three and a half here. Uh, going, pivoting over to Germany, um, Bayern minus two against Cone. Um, I think Bayern are absolutely going to work. Cone, Cone are very bad, concede a lot of goals, and Bayern are going to want to hit the ground running after an international break as they are uh, very healthy. And then Leverkusen, over three and a half against Werder Bremen. Um, you know, I always take the Leverkusen over, and it really hasn't failed me at all. So we're going to keep doing it here. Go back to the well. And then for over three and a half in the Dortmund Gladbach game. Um, Gladbach are very bad at the back. Um, and Dortmund are going to want to make a statement here that they're going to challenge for top four, top three, top two. So I love this at over three and a half. And then my bonus bet that will not be tweeted is over three in Athletic Club versus Girona. And this match could be, I think I said three, three in the predictions. Um, so, you know, with that logic, this is a, a smashable number here at over three where you get the push. So, you know, that's a parlay and five straight bets for you because I missed you. And uh, we're going to have a great weekend here. Um, not only are you going to be stuck, but your pockets are going to be stuck as well from these winning bets. So we can't wait to recap these and definitely be in a good mood um, next Sunday. Of course, like he said, we'll recap all these bets and, and give you the download of Daniel's winnings. Um, I haven't touched any of these. Again, we cannot have me even grace the name of saying any of these games. Otherwise, things are crazy. So I don't even look at it. It just comes in here, and all of a sudden, Daniel starts talking. I don't even know what happens in this segment. But, of course, like I said, Sunday, we will recap everything for you as well as our predictions from the other games that Daniel did not bet on as well as all the other games that happen. Uh, as the recap show on Sunday always does. Until then, you can follow us on full time uh, at, on X at Full Time Roundup to engage with us. Of course, we do have our players uh, uh, XI players of the week for Sunday that you can interact with and let us know if you see anybody that takes the bill and should be part of that. You can interact with us individually on our Twitter handles at Liverpool CLTFC for Daniel and Life of Gesslin for myself. Of course, please download subscribe and leave a five-star rating wherever you get your podcast it will go a long way and of course like daniel said at the beginning happy thanksgiving to all of our american listeners and hope that you guys have a safe and happy time with family until then we will see you on sunday